Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy, and today I'm doing another Reddit recap where I go onto reddit-r-whiskey, see what the community is posting about, see what the buzz is, what are people saying in the whiskey world right now. Um, you know the rules. If we see a Blanton's, we keep scrolling. Tonight, I have a sample from a very good friend, an absolute gem of a human, Casey Goldberg. He has sent me a 1996 vintage Springbank Marzanella cast coming in at 13 years old, 54.9% uh, ABV, I think. Um, I've only nosed this so far, and oh my goodness. I know I am going to absolutely enjoy this. Let's jump in to our dash whiskey, see what is going on. <laughs> I actually uh, reposted this on my uh, Insta today. When you finally reveal the person who was drinking all your whiskey, would have got a wave for it too if it wasn't for you nosy kids. Shout out to uh, everyone who remembers uh, Scooby-Doo, the original cartoons, good stuff. Uh, here we go. What a bargain I found. All right, what did you get? Oh, hi. The Glenlivet 50 year old coming in a shade under $19,000. Uh, yeah, is that a good price? Let me look at the auction price and I'll put it right here and we'll see if it's actually good or not. But, uh, I mean, what a nice bottle design that is. Beautiful stuff. Now, let me know in the comments down below. Do you think the Glenlivet 50 year old will be a good whiskey? Let's say price is no object. Let's say you go to a bar and the bartender is like, you look like a nice person. Pick out anything, I'll pour you a dram. Would you pick the Glenlivet 50? Do you think it's gonna be good? I'm withholding my reservations that that would be something like super, super phenomenal. Um, but you never know. I mean, how many people are actually trying this or ever reviewing it? Never. Last time on the beach for the summer, enjoying what has become one of my favorites. You got some barrel here. What barrel is this? It looks like barrel seagrass. I don't think I've ever seen that one before. Huh. Uh, what about um, drinking whiskey at the beach? What do you guys feel on that? Is it something that you guys do? For me personally, I think it's a little too heavy for a really hot day at the beach. I would go for more something like uh, an easy drinking beer, you know, some kind of mixed drink perhaps, straight bourbon or any kind of straight whiskey doesn't really do it for me on the beach. I think like a mezcal spirit, like a nice, um, you know, easy drinking mezcal or even tequila or something like that would be more enjoyable than a, than a heavy bourbon, but to each their own. Cast strength bourbon at the beach, why not? <laughs> here's another one. Since we're sharing bargains, here's a deal I found on Edinburgh's Royal Mile. So we got Balvini 50, so the Balvini 50s, um, the, I've seen, you can watch a video on how they make the boxes for them. Absolutely really cool with all the wood layers. Uh, this one's looking like it's coming in at 30,000 pounds. So again, let me know in the comments down below, Balvini 50 or Glenlivet 50? I think it's an easy no brainer. You go with the Balvini 50 over the Glenlivet. What is the ABV on this? 42%, so it's actually coming in at uh, less ABV, right? Um, so no, the Glenlivet 50 is actually bottled at cash strength 48% ABV, whereas the Balvini 50 um, is 42% ABV. Uh, that could still could be cash strength. Um, but yeah, I don't know. 48% cash strength. I mean, maybe my opinion's being changed right now. But uh, no, I think still for me, it'd be Balvini over Glenlivet when you get into the 50 year old category. Um, here's someone in Scottsdale, um, all the styles, wow, what a lineup. This looks like it's at a uh, Costco and man, they've got a serious amount of exceptional <laughs> high price bottles. It just keeps going. Let me know in the comments down below, Costco. Uh, here in Ontario, the Costco's don't sell alcohol. Um, in Alberta, they do. That's the only place in Canada that I'm aware of. Um, yeah, it's always interesting to see what kind of stuff. Let me replay that. So right off the bat, he's got a Royal Salute for $27,000, 52-year-old. We're really getting to the, <laughs> people are into the high age statements here on the Reddit review. And then we got a Tomatin 50 year old. That's going for $12,000. 
Then we're stopping over. This looks like a Gordon McPhail bottling of Colila. And that is in 1969, it looks like. Uh, just, uh, what, 11.5 for that one. Uh, then that looks like a Ben Romick. What is that, 50-year-old? Uh, another 50-year-old whiskey. Okay, so there's the title of the video. It's going to be 50-year-old scotch. Uh, a 40-year-old uh, Little Mill. For eight grand, I mean, that might be the value buy there. Uh, Glenfiddich, that looks like a single cask, um, $8,000. Belvini 40, I mean, so you go from Belvini 40 for six grand to Belvini 50 for what, 40,000. What a jump. Um, Tomatin 1975, uh, 4,700. So I really, I had an excellent Tomatin one time. It was a, I think it was a, it was a small uh, vatting of like three casks or something like that. I'll put it here if I can find it, what it was. Exceptional, exceptional stuff. The best tomato I've ever had. Um, just goes to show you that any distillery can really come out with something like super amazing. I'm not a huge tomato fan, their core range at all. And this thing, uh, you know, it was something special. Uh, of course, the Macallan, um, a little uh, black ladder. A 43 year old, whew, 3,200 bucks. Um, Craig Allocke, 30 something, what's that? 33 year old. McCallan, 25, pretty standard, uh, pretty standard stuff. A little Johnny Walker, uh, bicentenary blend, I haven't even heard of that. There you go. Glenfiddich, 30 year old, 700 bucks. I mean, when you go down the line, it just seems like such a good price. McCallan 18 for 300. That's pretty standard, I think, for these days. For 300, that's probably actually the lowest price you'll see a McCallan 18 sherry cast go for. And then some rounds it out with some other, some other things as well. But yeah, what a lineup. Get in some other uh, spirits there. Absolutely insane. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> 50-year-old whiskey is becoming uh, readily available nowadays, I guess. Uh, let's take a little uh, break and see what this whiskey is all about. Because this thing is, <laughs> I can smell it and it smells incredible. So again, 13 years old, I'm assuming cast strength. Um, uh, Manzanello cask. Insanely good. Yeah, this is candy in your mouth. The fruit notes bursting with flavor. It's every red fruit you can think of. It's all of your tropical fruit you can think of. It's like a little bit of chocolate fudge in there. Campbelltown note uh, makes itself known on the finish. A little bit of that pea, just touching it. <laughs> Casey, spoiled me, my friend. The nose is really nice, but the finish on this whiskey, my goodness. Man. What were we doing again? Oh yeah, Reddit? Okay. Just arrived my door today. Uh, the, is this the new um, Arbeg 19? Is this uh, edition three? Let's see. Looks like it. Batch three, coming in at 46.2% ABV. I haven't seen uh, one of these around yet. Uh, interesting to uh, see what this one's about. I really liked number two. I thought it was uh, more peated than number one. Um, I thought one was decent, but again, I wouldn't I wouldn't pay the money for it. Um, I thought number two was was pretty good, and uh, yeah, number three is coming out. So interesting. I'd love to uh, get a sample of that at some point in time. All right, so far so good. Not seeing any Blantons, so that's good. Um, uh, here's a guy who does reviews. Will it old fashioned? Uh, Maker's Mark. RC6 edition. Interesting. Uh, I like that kind of uh, will it make a good old fashioned and trying out different bourbons. Uh, for me, with the old fashioned, I really like the bullet. Um, I think it's it's an inexpensive bourbon that works super well in cocktails. It's got a high rye content, which adds a little bit of spiciness to it. I think it works super well with with uh, Angostura bitters. Uh, so that's kind of my go-to standard for mixing uh, old fashions with. I've tried other stuff around. Um, but it seems like if you go like something more expensive 
in the bourbon category that has like more complexity. It doesn't seem to work as well in a cocktail, something maybe kind of more kind of straightforward. That's my opinion. Um, this person, let's see what they say. Oh wow, he's got a whole set of rules here. Jeez, this is involved. Uh, if you want to read this, I will link to it in the description down below. Uh, so his need score was 3.75, his score with water was 3.5, and his old-fashioned score is 4.25. So yeah, really good. Uh, I'm really liking that. If you want to read this whole uh, write-up, I will uh, link to this in the description down below. Really cool. You should uh, follow this guy. Seems like he knows what he's doing about mixing bourbon in cocktails. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go, guys. I'm going to blur this out. Blanton's post, boo. Okay, let's just see what they want for it. What are they charging at duty free for Blanton's? Don't even say that. A hundred dollars. Barf in my mouth. Another Blanton's post, okay. We were doing so well with the 50 year old scotch and then we just had to go to Blanton's, didn't we? Didn't we, Reddit? Come on. All right, let's go back to the spring bank because this is just crazy. So the nose, again, all those like super bold fruit notes are just jumping at you. And then underneath that, you get the spring bank funk, just very mild. You get kind of like dungy kind of dampness. <sighs> Leather, there's like a nuttiness to this, almonds. There's something kind of like floral element to it, but it's very uh, hard to describe. It's got so much going on. <laughs> I mean, this is up there as far as some of the best spring bank I've ever had. No, no question about that. At 13 years old, crazy. Um, scoring something like this is super difficult, but I'll throw out a score. I'm just going to throw it out there. Um, 92 and a half. Huge, huge freaking score. Huge score. Unbelievably good. Casey, you're the man. Getting a little low, going to be sad when it's gone. The John uh, Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye Whiskey, one of the best releases of its year. Um, great value, great stuff. That's going to do it for me on the Reddit recap. Let me know in the comments down below if you like this style of video. And uh, until next time, guys, have a good one. Cheers.